Good morning. Good morning and welcome to worship today with First Baptist Church on 5th. My name is Emily Hull McGee. I serve as one of our pastors, and you have picked quite the festive morning to be here today in worship. We are so glad that you're here today. I know that there are a number of visitors who are out in our midst. Perhaps you're a friend of one of these fine musicians here, or perhaps the season has drawn you here today. Whatever is the reason that has propelled you into this place, we're glad that you're here. I would encourage you to find a connection card, which is located in the back of the pew in front of you. Fill that out and drop it in the offering plate later in our worship so that we can welcome you more fully and call you by name. We're so glad that you're with us today. We also know that a number of you are worshiping with us online, so I extend a welcome on behalf of all of us here at 501 West 5th to wherever you may be. For the community gathered at Brookridge and for all who are scattered around, welcome. We invite you to check out our website at firstonfifth.org and fill out the online connection card there so we can know a bit more about you. We're glad that you're with us today. Today is the third Sunday of Advent, when we focus on lighting the candle and celebrating the spirit of joy, the joy that comes to us in this season, and a joy made especially real today in our service of lessons and carols. This type of uh, way to tell an old, old story is what the dean of King's College in Cambridge, Eric Milner White, was seeking back in 1918 for his Christmas Eve service. He wanted an imaginative retelling of Advent worship and dreamt up a service called the Festival of Lessons and Carols, which in scripture and song told the story of the God who so loved the world. Lessons and Carols has become a beloved tradition all around the world in various Christian churches from all places. And amidst war and violence, division and disease, growth and possibility, this service of Lessons and Carols holds space each year for wonder and hope and peace and joy and love to come to life. But with each incarnation of this old, old story, in churches both urban and rural, of all denominations and traditions, in all corners of the world and in every color and creed and conviction, we each experience again the birth of a babe, one who comes bringing hope in the midst of despair, one who comes to wage peace in the midst of injustice, one who comes to orient us to joy in the midst of sadness, one who comes to live love right in this place. This story of God's love for the world, given for all and received by all, is told today in our service of Lessons and Carols. And it's described for us so beautifully in our artwork on the cover of your worship guide and in this poem by Madeline Lingle. Let me read this for us. God did not wait until the world was ready, till nations were at peace, God came when the heavens were unsteady and prisoners cried out for release. God did not wait for the perfect time. God came when the need was deep and great. God dined with sinners in all their grime, turned water into wine. God did not wait till hearts were pure. In joy, God came into a tarnished world of sin and doubt to a world like ours of anguished shame. God came and God's light would not go out. God came to a world which did not mesh to heal its tangles, shield its scorn. In the mystery of the word made flesh, the maker of the stars was born. We cannot wait till the world is sane to raise our songs with joyful voice for to share our grief to touch our pain, God came with love. Rejoice, rejoice. No matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome in this place. Not by me, not by our church, but by the God who did not wait to dwell among us. Rejoice and welcome to First Baptist on Fifth. The word of the Lord according to the prophet Isaiah. The spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring good news to the oppressed, 
to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and release to the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to provide for those who mourn in Zion, to give them a garland instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the mantle of praise instead of a faint spirit. They will be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, to display his glory. They shall build up the ancient ruins. They shall raise up the former devastations. They shall repair the ruined cities, the devastations of many generations. For I, the Lord, love justice. I hate robbery and wrongdoing. I will faithfully give them their recompense, and I will make an everlasting covenant with them. Their descendants shall be known among the nations and their offspring among the peoples. All who see them shall acknowledge that they are a people whom the Lord has blessed. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My whole being shall exalt in my God. For he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness. As a bridegroom decks himself with a garland, and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. For as the earth brings forth its shoots, and as a garden causes what is sown in it to spring up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring up before all the nations.
God sent Jesus as a baby to grow up to be a child to share a peace that only God can provide. But not only did God share it with us, but we are allowed to share that with one another. So in the words of a child this morning, we share these words with one another. May the peace of Christ be with you. And also with you. Please share those words with one another. And we begin this Lessons and Carols with a bidding prayer. The bidding prayer bids us or invites us to hear again the story and also to pray for this world that this good news would be light to this world that finds itself in darkness. You know, this is the same prayer that was used in 1918, and we've prayed it many times here. So it's the same prayer, but it's very different because we are different and the world is different. So this prayer even sounds different this year than last year as we pray it together. But we pray in this dark world that the story of the good news will be the light that lightens this dark world. So, beloved in Christ, with delight we prepare ourselves to hear again the message of the angels to go in heart and mind to Bethlehem and to see the loving kindness of our God and the babe lying in a manger. Let us therefore open the Holy Scriptures and read the earliest story of our disobedience to God's holy will, which is common to us all, and then the story of the birth of Jesus Christ our Lord to save us from our sins, and let us thank Him with our carols of praise. But first let us pray for the needs of this whole world, in a world fragmented by warring factions and rampant injustice, we pray for peace and goodwill over all the earth. Hear us, O oh God, in the silence of our hearts. We pray for reconciling love and unity within the church Christ formed to be his continuing body to minister to the world. Hear us, O oh God, from the depths of our spirits. We pray for the poor, the helpless, the cold, the hungry and the oppressed, the sick and those who mourn, the lonely and the unloved. Hear us, O oh God, as we seek your strength. We pray for those who do not know the Lord Jesus, or who do not love Him, or who by sin have grieved His heart of love. Hear us, O God, as we yearn to tell Your good news. We pray for the great cloud of witnesses of all times and places whose hope is in the Word made flesh and whose home is with You forever. Help us, O God, as we join with them to give You praise. These prayers and praises let us humbly offer up to the throne of heaven in the words that Christ himself has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. In Genesis 3, verses 8 through 15, God tells sinful Adam that he has lost the life of paradise. Hear these words. They heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden at the time of the evening breeze. And the man and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. But the Lord God called to the man and said to him, 
Where are you? He said, I heard the sound of you in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, and I hid myself. He said, Who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree of which I commanded you not to eat? The man said, The woman whom you gave to be with me, she gave me fruit from the tree, and I ate. Then the Lord God said to the woman, What is this that you have done? The woman said, The serpent tricked me, and I ate. The Lord God said to the serpent, Because you have done this, cursed are you among all animals and among all wild creatures. Upon your belly you shall go, and dust you shall eat all the days of your life. I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your offspring and hers. He will strike your head and you will strike his heel. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
In our second lesson, God promises to Abraham that by his descendants, all nations of the earth shall be blessed. Hear now Genesis 22, 15 through 18. The angel of the Lord called to Abraham a second time from heaven and said, By myself I have sworn, says the Lord, because you have done this and have not withheld your son, your only son, I will indeed bless you. And I will make your offspring as numerous as the stars of heaven and as sand that is on the seashore. And your offspring shall possess the gate of their enemies. And by your offspring shall all the nations of the earth gain blessing for themselves, because you have obeyed my voice. This is the word of the Lord. and seven, the prophet foretells the coming of the Savior. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time onward and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you. 
fourth lesson is from Isaiah chapter 11, where the peace that Christ will bring is foretold. A shoot shall come up, come out from the stump of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. The spirit of the Lord shall rest on him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. His delight shall be in the fear of the Lord. He shall not judge by what his eyes see or decide by what his ears hear, but with righteousness he shall judge the poor and decide with equity for the meek of the earth. The wolf shall live with the lamb, the leopard shall lie down with the kid, the calf and the lion and the fatling together, and a little child shall lead them. The cow and the bear shall graze, their young shall lie down together, the lion shall eat straw like the ox. The nursing child shall play over the hole of the asp, and the weaned child shall put its hand on the adder's den. They will not hurt or destroy on all my holy mountain, for the earth will be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
lesson, the angel Gabriel appears to Mary. This is from Luke chapter 1, verses 26 to 35 and 38. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary, and he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one. The Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God, God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be holy. He will be called the Son of God. Then Mary said, Here am I the servant of the Lord, let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
the sixth lesson from Luke chapter 2, verses 1 and 3 through 7. Luke tells the birth of Jesus. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Our seventh lesson continues in Luke chapter 2, verses 8 to 16, where the shepherds go to the manger. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in the manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angel had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Magi are led by the star to Jesus. Matthew 2, 1 to 11. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem asking, where is the child who has been born King of the Jews? For we observed his star at its rising and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, 
he was frightened and all Jerusalem with him and called together all the chief priests and scribes of the people. He inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him, in Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophet. And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler who is the shepherd, my people Israel. The Herod secretly called for the wise men and learning from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child. And when you have found him, bring me word so I that may also go and pay him homage. When they heard the king, they set out, and there ahead of them went the star that they had seen at its rising until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then, opening their treasure chests, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. This is the word of the Lord.
the ninth lesson from John chapter 1, verses 1 through 14. John unfolds the mystery of the incarnation. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood or of the will of the flesh or of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. From beginning to end, the word, word made flesh and word dwelling among us, that word is always, always love. And it is good news for us today. We all need this story of good news. We who are lonely and tired and need a space to breathe, we who need forgiveness and who need to forgive, we who are devastated by wars and violence, we who came into this room today with fear or courage or gratitude or heartache, we who have spent our whole lives wondering if God really loves us, we whose grief and loss is deeper than words could touch, we who are yearning for the miracle of light, light that can overwhelm the darkness that we find ourselves in. And so for we, for us, for you, God tore open the heavens. God put on human flesh and God dwelled among us so that we may never, ever be alone. For you, for us, God came close. It's a wonder, isn't it? It's a mystery and a hope without which we cannot help but to respond. If today the stirring within you is a stirring to be a follower of Jesus, or if today you feel a call to come and be part of this beloved community saying, I need people with me on the way, if either of those is an invitation that God has extended to you, as we sing our closing hymn, Hark the Herald Angels Sing, I will stand just up here and invite you to come down front so we can celebrate what God is at work doing in your life. It is a gift to be together and it is a gift to sing our closing hymn today. Would you stand and let us sing together?
in today's hustle and busyness that surrounds this time of the year, today we stop and gather as a people to focus, to celebrate and honor the birth of our Savior, Jesus Christ. We celebrate through music and through the word. Joyful sounds have filled our sanctuary, and we've raised our voices calling for the faithful to come and asking, come thou Lord, our long expected Jesus. We anticipate the brightness of a thousand candles that will take the darkest night to a glorious morn and a thousand carols proclaiming our wonderful Savior is born. As we open our hearts and deepen our love for you, open our eyes to those who find it hard to see the joy of the season. Emotionally, people are spent. Caregivers are overwhelmed and tired. Others feel emptiness because their families are not near or they're grieving because someone they loved has died. Some are struggling to feed their families and pay the rent. As we bring these offerings to you today, Lord, let us give with a generous spirit. No amount is too small. Each financial gift provides hope, not only for our church, but also for our community. Lord, we lift our eyes in wonder toward that bright star to guide us. Let each day fill us with gratitude over the birth of Christ. Dona nobis pacem. Grant us peace, Lord. All these in thy name. Amen. What a gift it has been today to worship together and to celebrate this service of lessons and carols. I want to begin where I know you want me to begin, which is in gratitude for David and Jake and our incredible musicians, our sanctuary choir. Would you join me in thanking them? Services like today don't just happen, and so I know you appreciate what they have offered and led us in today. You see a number of announcements there in the order of your worship guide for today. Let me remind you, after uh, our worship is concluded today, we have some Christmas shopping available for you to do. Uh, we will have a pop-up market in the commons. There are all sorts of items that will be sold, including items from Mission Partners, Amani Sasa, and Crisis Control, <laughs> as well as items that have our church information and logo and, and uh, colors on them. You won't want to miss it, so make your way to the commons uh, upon the conclusion of our worship service today. If you signed up to come to Tanglewood Lights tonight and ride in an open-air wagon through Tanglewood, perhaps you can imagine that we're not going to do that. We're just going to go home and hunker in and stay warm and dry. So Amy will have sent an email this afternoon so you can see how you might get a refund for that trip. This week we have a number of events that you see there in your worship guide. Don't forget next Sunday is actually Christmas Eve, so we get to have church twice. You'll come in the morning, we'll celebrate the fourth Sunday of Advent, and then on Christmas Eve night we're back in this room at five o'clock for our service of carols and candlelight. It will be a special time. Finally, I always remind you, if you haven't uh, uh, learned more about our church, you can check out firstonfifth.org 
One of you has said to me repeatedly, don't say that until our website is new and up and the old website is, we're ready to change it out. So we have a new website and I hope that you will actually now go to firstonfifth.org and learn more about who we are. Tell us a bit more about who you are. We give thanks for all the folks that brought that to life. Finally, let me introduce to you some new friends that are actually old friends because they've been around for a while. I leaned over to David and said, have two folks ever come out of the choir on the service of Lessons and Carols and joined the church and he couldn't remember anyone, so you win, Bill and Donna Henson. Let me introduce Bill and Donna Henson. They have been worshiping with our church for some time now. Obviously, they have gotten involved here among us and it is a gift to say welcome to the two of you as you come to plant your lives here at First Baptist on Fifth. I say to Bill and Donna what I say to everyone who joins, that we're ready for you to come and lead us to be more faithful, more loving, more just, more kind, more brave. We're so glad that you're here. If you would rejoice with me in welcoming Bill and Donna Henson here into the family at First Baptist on Fifth, would you say thanks be to God? Bill and Donna are going to stay here at the front so you can come and welcome them, tell them your name, promise to tell it again, make your way to the commons, and for uh, uh, this wonderful day we give such thanks. You may be seated just for a moment. And now for all that God has done this day, for all that God promises to do as we leave from this place, would you stand and let us sing our thanks and praise. <laughs> So friends, now as we end this form of worship, to begin again the worship that is our very lives, we go forth from this place in great gratitude and joy for the God who came close in Jesus. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Amen. Amen.